Okay, hello everyone. My peoples, my peoples, where you at? My name is Mark. This is Why I Hate the World. Lots of things to talk about today. We're going to keep working on our little froglodite caveman frog dude. In fact, what I think I'm going to do today is I'm going to get rid of the outline here and just sort of go over it, make it look more like a painterly kind of thing and less like a coloring book kind of thing. So first thing we are going to talk about today is the Flintstones. Have you guys been keeping up with this weird trend in right-wing circles nowadays where they like to, they, they call it trans investigations is what it is. And it's where people like uh, sort of right-wing influencer types, you know, QAnon types, whatever, they go through photos of celebrities and uh, famous people and political figures and, and whatnot and quote unquote out to them as trans, which in real life, they're not actually doing that. They're just kind of going to people they don't like and then saying that person's trans because maybe they have a bulge in their uh, pants or something like that, or maybe the lighting is done in such a way to where it makes it look like a woman has an Adam's apple or something like that. And then they're saying, see, Megan Fox was trans this whole time. <laughs> right. And I use her as an example because she was one of the first people that I've seen that they did this to. But I've seen this sort of trans investigation stuff with all kinds of different celebrities. Hulk Hogan, Megan Fox. I think there was one a few weeks back where they were saying Kyle Rittenhouse was trans now. And what is it really? What it is, is it's essentially whenever a celebrity or a famous person or a politician does something that these people don't like, then it's a way for them to essentially just insult them and be like, see, they were trans this whole time. Which is, of course, bullshit. It's complete 100% ridiculous idiotic right-wing turfy bullshit the thing is it's ridiculous and stupid and nobody with a brain wouldn't even believe any of this shit to begin with but that doesn't mean it's not harmful and it's essentially just a bunch of insane right-wingers on the internet bullying people is what it is if it was just crazy people on the internet we could just leave it there but they go a little far sometimes, and sometimes it gets really ridiculous. So now I'm starting to see these sort of trans investigator people talk about things like music and movies and even cartoons, which brings us to our first little segment in the stream today. Brings us to the first thing we're going to talk about, and that is the Flintstones. Yes, The Flintstones by Hanna-Barbera, one of the most recognizable, most classic cartoons of all time. Fun for the entire family. Yes, apparently The Flintstones this entire time has been trans. Apparently Fred Flintstone is trans. Apparently this was just a setup in order to brainwash your kids and like, you know, shove it down your throat or whatever, right folks? What am I talking about? Well, there's a channel that I just found. Let me go ahead and turn this on here. This is a channel that I found called Wretched Recess. And it kind of looks like someone who recently restarted their channel. They only have uh, 43 subs at this point. Like they've only been up for a little while, like maybe two weeks, something like that. And they've got like nine videos. And it looks like whoever this person is, her original channel got deleted. And so she's re-upping her channel here. So check it out while you can, folks, because chances are her new channel is going to get... It could get deleted at any time. <laughs> so yes, Wretched Recess has done the big expose on the Flintstones here in order to warn us of the evil uh, LGBTQ agenda to turn all of the frogs gay or whatever. Let's listen to what she has to say. Hey everyone, welcome back to Wretched Recess. On my channel, the primary focus is weird stuff they make for kids. And before we talk about this being a man in a dress, if you're enjoying my content, no, please hit fuck subscribe. you. Fuck you, don't it subscribe. Really mean a lot to me, and Fuck her, to do subscribers. not subscribe. Let's get into it. 
All right, guys. So this is a theory or a conspiracy theory that I have just been thinking about um, lately, and I'm just starting to dip my toes into it. But I got excited to talk about it because there's a lot of weird stuff about the Flintstones. And um, I've just been trying to see like what else I could find. And I'm ready to... Now, I just want to point that out first off. I like how she's admitting that she's just making it up. I like that. I respect that. You know, she said, oh, here's a conspiracy theory I'm dipping my toes into and I'm looking to see what I can find. Because a lot of the times, you know, these conspiracy theory types, like they try to pretend like, oh, this is ancient knowledge or whatever, or this is stuff that's well known. And all you have to do is do your own research and blah, 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 blah. And you'll, you'll see that I'm correct. And it's not me saying this. I'm spreading this information for you, for your benefit. And I like how she just is not even trying to claim that she has any evidence or proof or anything about her claims that she's just like, oh, I'm just looking to see what I can find. Like, i.e. she's looking to see what she can just pull out of her asshole, what she can just make up. And you know something? That's a nice little breath of fresh air because usually these types of people are are really self-righteous and like they try to claim that this is like, I'm telling you the absolute truth. And it's like, no, she's just... She just straight out let us all know it's just all bullshit speculation. So, anyway, at least she's honest about being a liar. Moving on. To share some of these things, and then we can talk about um, even more stuff. You guys are great. You're always finding um, even more details, and it's so fun to talk about. So, there's problems right on down the row here. <laughs> so, um, let me mention a few of like the biggest things that I found. First of all, when I was little, um, those swirls in Wilma's hair always... I don't, I don't know if they bothered me, but they always captured my attention and I thought they were very mm -hmm. strange. Like, it seemed like a very um, specific and intentional way of drawing her hair. Know what I'm saying? So we see two there in her hair at the top and on the side. And honestly, I'm just coming in hot. Let's just talk about pedo stuff right off the, like, right off the bat. This is the pedo FBI um, recognized pedo symbol for little... Jumping straight into the bullshit I see. So I guess, like, what, Wilma's hair is like a secret message for pedos or whatever because she's got swirls? Okay. Boy lover. And we see this same exact symbol in Wilma's hair. And we're going to see it again on one of the other characters in just a bit. Something else interesting about Wilma... So, fun fact, you guys. That page that she just showed right there is actually from WikiLeaks. And it was something that was put up in 2007. And in fact, I've got the page right here. I think we should uh, take a look at it. So this is from WikiLeaks. Unclassified Law Enforcement Sensitive Federal Bureau of Investigation Intelligence Bulletin. Symbols and logos used by pedophiles to identify sexual preferences. Now, the thing about this is that this page is the only page like it's not like there's a whole document or anything that backs this up and this has never been substantiated this has never been verified but the claim is that these are symbols that various pedo type people use in order to identify each other as in if you're wearing a ring or a necklace with this symbol then you could be like, I'm one of you, I'm one of the chosen or whatever, right? The thing is, we don't know if this is true, if there was any, if this was ever even really the case. There's been no further corroboration that any of these things are real. And honestly, just having a triangle with a swirl in it, you see this sort of swirl type thing all the time. Just to give you an example... This is the logo of the Sega Dreamcast. You remember the Sega Dreamcast, you know? It was the successor to the Sega Saturn, came out right around 99, I believe. It was a competitor with the PlayStation 2. Some of the best games ever made came out on the Sega Dreamcast. I still have my Dreamcast. I play it all the time. Here's one that looks this little uh, blue swirl. That looks just like the blue swirl here. That the FBI says is a uh, is a pedo symbol. Is it true? Who knows? Has it been substantiated? No, it hasn't. But that's where this comes from. And I believe that people from 4chan spread this around and have essentially invented hundreds and hundreds of other symbols that are not from 
any FBI database or whatever. And people just ran with it. And now there's like entire subcultures of people on the internet that all they do is they go around and try to identify secret pedo symbols. You know, this is like Pizzagate kind of shit. This is the kind of thing that you saw when they were saying like, oh, John Podesta or whatever, hiding children in his pizza shop. And when they say they want pizza and wings, it really means they want this number of children or whatever. And when they say they want special sauce, it really means they want kids that are this age. Shit like that. And which is all like complete and total bullshit. There's just no truth to any of this stuff whatsoever. All these years have passed and people still fucking believe it. And now they're trying to claim that Wilma's hair is a secret fucking pedophile symbol. It's, uh, yeah, let's, let's continue on a little bit more. Wilma is, that might be a stone necklace, but it's very, um, looks just like a pearl necklace that we've seen on so many of the other people we've discussed on this channel. The they're supposed to be rocks, by the way, her necklace. They're not pearls. They're rocks that are supposed to look like pearls. <laughs> but what is it about pearl necklaces that what so if you wear a pearl necklace you're a trans woman like is is that the case like so no like cis women who are not pedophiles wear pearl necklaces and here's the other thing about this right the flintstones was something that was created like back in the 50s i believe like early 60s late 50s i can't remember exactly when the flintstones became a thing so does that mean that these symbols, they were like pedophile symbols all the way back then as well? Is that what she's trying to say? Like even all the way back in the day, all the way back in the 50s and 60s, people were using these symbols? So like, does that mean just what, for hundreds of years or something? Like just ever since there have been pearl necklaces, they've always meant trans pedos or whatever, right? Is that what she's trying to say? I like how you don't even have to Google stuff to debunk these things. All you have to do is just think about it rationally and they all fall apart, right? Continuing on. Male to females are always wearing pearl necklaces and we've noticed that was a thing. Thank you so much to one of my subscribers. I will go back and look through my comments so I can give you a shout out in the description of this video. Um, leave a comment below if this was you. Who said that oysters are basically hermaf uh, hermaphrodites? And look at this. It says, mm. so they have both male and female reproductive organs. That's a hermaphrodite, right? And they change gender during their lives. This says most oysters start Not life always. as males and become females after about a year. But they can change gender multiple times. <laughs> that is so crazy. So um, oysters have both male and sex um male and female sex organs at the same time that is true but what does that have to do with trans people like does that mean that oysters are like a trans symbol i mean is that true folks i don't know if that's true or not kind of sounds like bullshit to me the thing she's referring to by the way is that oysters they they kind of form a stack like some breeds of oysters and what it is is that the male on the, will be the one on the top of the stack. And any of the um, other oysters that join at the bottom of the stack like will change their sex to female. That's what they're referring to. So is that really a thing? Trans people wearing pearl necklaces because it's like symbolism? I mean, that sounds kind of like, you know, believable. But oysters as a secret pedo symbol does not sound believable to me right? That kind of sounds like bullshit. <laughs> so, but what the, what does that mean? That means that every time you see a cartoon character now that wears a fucking pearl necklace, any of them anywhere, these people are going to think that it's like some kind of hidden fucking hidden message to like the evil trans pedos or some shit. Because you got to remember with conspiracy theories, there doesn't have to be any truth to it. There doesn't have to be any logic to it. It just has to be something that fits their worldview and makes them feel good and then they will believe it until the end of time and not, not only will they believe it they will bully and persecute other people based on that fraudulent belief that's why it's important to fight against this shit moving on so is that why all of these male to females are always wearing pearl necklaces from first ladies to we saw it on Barbara Billingsley and my um, Leave it to Beaver. Um, like it's like all, it's just about all of the male to females. We see them wearing pearl necklaces a lot. So Wilma, so far you're wearing uh, so far you're a hermaphrodite and you have pedo swirls like, all over your hair. And um, what else do you guys notice about? Now, I just want to kind of point out what just happened right there. 
I want to point out just what happened. So she started, right, with, hey, Wilma has a swirl in her hair. And, oh, she's wearing a necklace that kind of looks like pearls. Then she made a bunch of speculations about, oh, well, these are probably maybe kind of secret symbols or whatever. And then she just ended with saying that it was a definite fact. Did you guys catch that? I want to kind of point that out because that's a very telling thought process. Like that really shows what the thought process is for conspiracy theorists. And not just these sort of transvestigation turf fucking conspiracy theories, right? But just conspiracy theorists in general, they start with speculation. And then by the end of the thought, the speculation has become reality. The, the speculation is now true. I just want to point that out. I just want to point out exactly what she just did. She started with something that she has zero proof for. She has zero evidence. She has zero proof. She just speculated. She admitted in the beginning that she was making it all up. And now it's definitely in her mind forever. She now believes that Wilma, a cartoon character from the fucking Flintstones, is a secret message for pedophiles or whatever. Like, she now believes that. And she will now believe it for the rest of her life. Do you see how that works? See how that works? When you're conspiracy theorist, you don't need evidence. Conspiracy theorists really are the dumbest fucking people on earth. <laughs> they really are. They talk themselves into believing this fucking bullshit with zero evidence. It's because it's all stuff that just fits her worldview. It fits her preconceived notions of what the stuff is. Now, any evidence that you were to present to the contrary would just be ignored. It's like it's over. It's like it's the most backwards, like unscientific, unrational method of thinking like ever. Moving on. This interesting photo. I see um, her doing the M symbol that we've seen so many times. Um, and that's for like Mason, like free Mason, um, like hand symbols there. Super shady. And we're only like three minutes in. I love how all this shit just feeds off of each other. It's not enough that she could be a secret, you know, pedophile, trans, whatever. Now they got to throw some Freemasons in there, too. And do people really still believe this shit? The Freemasonry thing has been a conspiracy for like a hundred years. I mean, you would think at this point there's enough evidence out there to show that it's harmless and not real. But people still fucking believe it. I don't know. Moving on. Let's see what she has to say about Fred and Barney. I always thought Fred and Barney had like really interesting shaped bodies. Notice that they're plumper. Notice that their legs and cankles are, <laughs> they have cankles. Uh, they're a little bit cut off in this picture. But um, they're very strangely um, drawn, right? They're a little shorter and plumper than their wives. Okay. The wives are skinny. They have lean limbs lean legs skinny ankles kind of like we see on all of the male to females right so our fred and barney <laughs> transgender i mean they are cartoons guys but the they are very famous cartoons so yeah. uh, don't let the fact that they're cartoons fool you they can't put anything regular on tv so um i think you know where i'm going with this so wait wait because Fred and Barney have big, thick legs and big, thick ankles, that means that they're trans characters? They're supposed to be trans characters? I mean, why exactly? So is every like female to male trans person, do every single one of them have big, thick legs? <laughs> is, is that something I'm just not aware of? How does that make any sense? I'm like a man, a cis male. I have big, thick legs. <laughs> right? My legs are big and thick and I have muscles and shit in my legs. I mean, isn't that how biological men are supposed to look? Like, why does she think this shit? Is it because, it, is it because Fred and Barney don't look the way that she thinks biological males are supposed to look? Is that why? Like, so how the fuck are you supposed to look? You know, that's another thing. That's another reason, like, how this anti-trans shit can just harm normal people. How many stories have you seen? As, as an aside, for example. As an aside and as a pretty good example. How many stories have you seen of women who have been either harassed or arrested for using the wrong bathroom in states where they passed laws saying that transgender people have to use, like, their 
assigned uh, birth gender for the bathrooms. How many stories have you seen where somebody says, hey, that woman is a trans person using the bathroom and it's not. It's like a cisgender woman. And it's because either she has short hair or she's not pretty enough. Or whoever it is, just some fucking crazy, ridiculous boomer asshole is like yelling at her because they don't think that she's a, a, a cis woman. Like, how many stories have you seen like that? Another example is the female boxer, I mean, Khalif, you know, made a whole video on that about how all these people were accusing her of being trans or whatever. Why? Because she doesn't look like what they think a woman should look like. She doesn't look like a cis woman. She's big and strong because she's an athlete and she's not small and petite and they think all women have to be small and petite and tiny and shit like that and it's like well no this woman's a fucking boxer all right she works out every day she's going to be big and strong it's fucking ridiculous and so they they accuse her of being something she isn't because she doesn't fit what they think the gender norm is i mean i mean khalif i don't even think she's gay I don't even think she was part of the LGBT community. In fact, it is illegal to be trans in Algeria, where she's from. I mean, this is just a perfect example of how people get harmed by bigotry. Even the people who are not the targets of bigots get harmed by bigots. All right, let's watch a little bit more of this. Orange. Adam, if you could like let us know um, exactly the meaning of that. But Fred is wearing orange, and I wanted to give Adam a shout out. Um, because now I look for orange. Um, oh, yeah. Apparently, so yeah, um, apparently, just wearing the color orange is enough to make you trans nowadays. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't understand. No more wearing orange, guys. That's it. Can't wear anything with the color orange in it or else you'd be turned into a trans person. Just That's all it takes. Just instantly just wear an orange t-shirt and suddenly my dick and balls disappear. And I grow a vagina and two big old titties just immediately appear on me. That's just what happens when you wear an orange t-shirt, right? Fucking ridiculous. Oh, my buddy. Guys, I've got so much more. Let's, let's keep going. As I was Googling Flintstone weirdness, <laughs> I came across an internet comment that said, did anybody ever notice that, um, like, Wilma's mom looks like a man? <laughs> um, this one actually might be Fred's mom. They both look like men. I'm going to show you both of them right now. <laughs> Here's Wilma's mom with the pedo swirl in her hair also. So that was passed down. Um, that's in their DNA, I guess, to get pedo swirls in their hair. <laughs> this person cracks me up. Um, notice this person also has pearl earrings, a pearl necklace. And you guys are going to try and say it's rocks, but it isn't. This person's name is Pearl. Pearls come from oysters and oysters are hermaphrodites. This whole show is messed up, guys. This is Pearl Slag Hoople. And... Conservatives really are media illiterate. So the joke, because remember, the, the Flintstones is a comedy show. See, the entire point about this is that she's supposed to be the overstepping mannish mother-in-law who comes and takes over the household and is very unladylike. And that has been the joke. It's not just been a joke in the Flintstones, but it's just been a joke in sitcoms in general for since we've had sitcoms, since the beginning of fucking television. I don't understand how you could miss that joke here. I mean, I, talk about media literate. It's, it's like one of the most overused tropes of all time. The angry, annoying mother-in-law. It's like the most overused trope ever. Of course, this was the 1960s, back when that shit was new. And her hair and necklace look like Wilma because she is Wilma's mother. You fucking imbecile. That's why. It's a stylistic choice in order to link those two characters together. How do you, especially when it comes to a cartoon, how do you make it easy for children to put two and two together and be like, oh, these two characters are related these two characters are mother and daughter. These two characters are father and, and son. How do you do that? You make the characters look like each other in that way. Because this is a show for children, ultimately. And that's how you make it easy for kids to understand. I mean, you would know this if you had the slightest bit of fucking media literacy and weren't looking for secret fucking codes everywhere. So stupid. Hey, she's not wearing orange. Does that mean that she's not a trans person? Moving on. Pearl 
so, so Pearl has pedos rolls in her hair. She's wearing um, oyster, or I'm sorry, <laughs> pearl earrings and a pearl necklace. And those shoulders are very broad and they're wider than her hips. Now, the interesting thing to me is they made the moms of Wilma and Fred have similar bodies to Fred and Barney. Like, you know, they're like plumper and they're heavier, but they have very manly faces. You know, there's nothing feminine about this person. Remove the jewelry and the pink dress, right? And this is like not a woman. Um, That's the point. The point was that it lo she looks like Fred. She looks like Fred in a dress and slightly more proportioned as a woman. That's the entire fucking joke. And I just, I can't believe that this woman doesn't get this. She doesn't understand this. It's like, have you never watched TV in your entire life? Because the Flintstones is not the only show that does this joke. This, like I said, is like the most overused trope of, of all time ever. Making the annoying stepmother big and ugly and mannish. They even did this in the fucking Flintstones movie, for crying out loud. Remember there was a Flintstones movie? And it had John Goodman and Elizabeth Taylor in it. And Elizabeth Taylor was playing his mom. <laughs> right. Or uh, Wilma's mom, excuse me. Playing Wilma's mom. Moving on. Um, oh my gosh. From head to toe, this person is problematic, right? <laughs> I think the biggest takeaway for me here... And what's problematic about her? It's a cartoon. But what's problematic about the cartoon? What is this woman actually saying? She's saying she's problematic because this fictional character doesn't look how she thinks a woman should look. You know, there's a, a subreddit out there called Are the Straits Okay? Right? And it's when straight people flip out over any small little mention of gay or trans people or anyone in the LGBTQ community. This is an example of that. It's like this woman is so insecure. She's so threatened by the existence of trans people that she's losing her mind. She's making an entire video. All of the content on her channel is about in trans investigations of fucking children's cartoon shows. She's so threatened by that, it's problematic if a fictional character doesn't conform to fucking gender norms. That's the real sickness here. <laughs> That's what's really problematic here. This person needs fucking therapy. ...was that this person's name is Pearl, and pearls come from oysters that are hermaphrodites. Classic Flintstone. So there are millions of people on Earth whose name is also Pearl. Pearl is a normal name that people have been naming their daughters for hundreds of years now. So does that mean that every single person on Earth whose name is Pearl is like was given that name because they're a secret trans woman? Is that what it is? You know, I would really like to see what this woman has to say about Steven Universe. Because that's like an actual cartoon that actually does have some like LGBTQ symbolism going on. She'd probably, like, die of a fucking heart attack if we showed her Steven Universe. Moving on. Great job. What is it, Hannah Barbera or something? Yeah. Very nice job, guys. We also need to take a look at Pebble. <laughs> wait, wait. Did she not know that Hannah Barbera were, were the people that drew the Flintstones? Did she not know that? Apparently, this person is not a very big Flintstones fan. I mean... Because that's like, yeah, Hanna-Barbera, those are the guys that created the Flintstones and Scooby-Doo and 500 billion other shows like it, you know, Yogi Bear and, and fucking Wacky Races and, and Huckleberry Hound and Tom and Jerry, I think, are Hanna-Barbera. Like, literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of cartoons like this. Like, she's just now just remembering. It, it really goes to show that these people don't really know what they're talking about. Like, they don't do any research. Like, if she just would have looked up the Flintstones on Wikipedia, she would have seen it was Hanna-Barbera. Like, how can you be commenting on shit like this when you don't even know the names of the company that created it? And here's the other thing. Let's steal man for a minute. And let's entertain the, the notion that the Flintstones are really a, a secret Masonic pedophile conspiracy or whatever and there's like secret codes inside of the cartoon and all that right well the cartoon was only created in the 1960s i think right you know let's look that up i don't want to be talking out of my ass let's look up flintstones 1960 okay so the flintstones were created in 1960 so that's really not that long ago 
I'm pretty sure that some of the people who originally worked on this show are still alive. Or if they're not alive, then they have relatives who are alive, or they have people who knew them who were alive. So if you're so concerned about them being like the head of a secret Masonic pedophile ring, couldn't you go investigate who those people actually were and see if they actually did have any connections to secret societies or something like that? It wouldn't be that hard. I mean, that's what an, an actual journalist would do. So, yeah, fuck that. They're not going to do that because that's what a journalist would do. That's what someone with integrity would actually do. They would actually go and check and see if any of this shit was real before just speculating and then treating the speculation like it's the truth. So that's the other thing you got to remember about conspiracy theorists, folks, is that they're fucking lazy. Conspiracy theorists are lazy as hell. And if it actually requires work in order to verify something, they won't do it. They'll just sit at home and they'll like think up and speculate all and come to like conclusions on themselves all fucking day long. But if it actually requires any work to like verify something, to verify a fact, they're not going to touch that shit with a 10 foot pole because they're lazy and stupid. Moving on. And Bam Bam. I didn't dig too much into like these fan sites, but I did notice somebody said Pebbles was supposed to be a boy or something, and it was a girl, so that's probably just another sign for us. But uh, take note of Bam Bam's um, caveman club there. What do you see? Oh, is it the same exact pedos roll design as in Wilma's hair and the mom's hair? <laughs> you bet it is. So that's how we know we're not being um, paranoid here. You see how this shit builds on each other? See, she takes a bit of information, which has not been corroborated. She takes a little bit of information that somebody posted once doesn't actually investigate to see if there's any truth to it, just accepts it at face value because it fits her fucking worldview. Once you do that, it's so easy to go out and identify people that fit in with your conspiracy theory. See, this is how conspiracy theories work. It's just people at home making shit up and then going out and finding the evidence that fits their conclusion after they make the conclusion. See, she didn't go out and then find all of these symbols and then investigate the people who put the, the symbols up and, and go and see if they actually were part of some kind of crazy secret society full of pedophiles or whatever. She didn't do that. No. She came to her conclusion first and now is going around and finding the evidence for her conclusion. She came to the conclusion, oh, look, the Flintstones is like some kind of secret pedophile thing. Hey, look, here's a bunch of crap that looks like symbols. Hey, look, they're wearing orange. Oh, look, Fred's mom is fucking ugly. She's obviously a man. Shit like that. Right? That's what she's actually doing. That's what all transvestigators, that's what they are. It's dangerous because people fucking will harass people over shit like this. They'll ruin people's lives over stuff like this. They'll dox people. They'll show up at people's work. You know, they'll show up at your work. They'll, like, fucking call your family. They'll get your family fired from their jobs because the target of their fucking harassment just isn't gender conforming enough. I mean, it's ridiculous because it's a cartoon, right? But this shit happens in real life all the fucking time from people like this. Moving on. Just as a refresher, you know, this is our little swirl. Now, I would say call me crazy. But being that we already see the pedo logo here, I don't think I'm crazy. I always thought, even when I was younger watching this, that like Pebbles was, I didn't have the, the language or the vocabulary for this when I was younger. But don't you think she was like very highly sexualized, like a very sexualized baby? Like, look at this. Yeah, you're crazy. It's a cartoon character, number one. Number two, what's sexualized about it? What, is she wearing a fucking bikini or something? Does Pebbles have, like, I mean, revealing clothing or something? Does she have her tits hanging out or whatever? How could you look at this and think that it's sexualized? I mean, unless you're some kind of fucking sick, deranged lunatic who's just seeing evidence for your dumb shit conspiracy, like, everywhere you fucking look. This is so, uh, so fucking stupid. He was always crawling around like this and, like, batting her eyelashes, like, goo goo ga ga. Like, Pebbles always bothered me. Um... Highly sexualized child, in my opinion. Look at the... Is this official art? Is she even looking at official art here? 
Because, you know, Rule 34, yeah, you can find all kinds of crazy shit on the internet. It looks like to me that she's just kind of going through Google image search. But even this, this is not sexualized. It's just like a cute kid looking bashful. I mean, where's the sexualization here? Am I just blind? Is that what is that what's going on? Am I just like overlooking? Is it obvious to everybody out there but me? I mean, somehow I don't think so. The way they um, those might be fan drawings, but yeah, she always <laughs> creeped me out a little bit. Just... I like how she even admits it. Those might be fan drawings. Uh, okay, so she's not even looking at the official artwork. You could go to like the Flintstones.com or HannahBarbera.com and look at the actual official artwork. But no, she's looking at fucking Google image search and being like, oh, this baby is sexualized. It's like, oh my God, you fucking idiot. I, I wonder what she would do if she were to type in rule 34 and look up, I don't know, Dexter's laboratory or something like that. That would probably give her a fucking stroke if she did that. It's because of um, how suggestive I thought they made her. And if you agree with that, let me know. Or if you don't agree with it, you can let me know that also. And well, <laughs> that brings us to Edna Flintstone. This is Fred's mom. <laughs> um, Edna also has on her pearls. You know, can't forget the pearls here. And this just looks like um, Fred with lipstick pretty much. But it is kind of like, I feel like were they blurring lines intentionally by they gave these moms the same bodies as Fred and Barney, but, but they just look like doesn't. total men in... She doesn't have the same body as Fred and Barney. If you actually look, her legs are more shapely than Fred and Barney. Fred and Barney's legs just go straight down into their feet. Like, they don't have calves. They don't have ankles. Like, she actually has legs that are shapely, and she has ankles, and she has curves. She has a booty and breasts. She has, like, an hourglass shape. I mean, it's not, you know, super, like, Barbie-like or whatever. But her body type is drawn like a woman's body type. She just has Fred's face. I mean, because that's the that's the trope. The trope is that, oh, the mother-in-law looks big and mannish or whatever. But even this character, I wouldn't even say this character is mannish. I mean, this character just looks like Fred. That's the point. That's the idea. You fucking imbecile. <laughs> like, how, how does this person not understand this? She must not have watched very many cartoons as a kid. Makeup. So, yeah, this is Edna Flintstone uh, looking super feminine here. <laughs> it just looks like a man with lipstick, right? And the pearls are telling us everything we need to know, I feel like. And let's not forget, Fucking this dumb. is like my golden moment here of the video, that Fred and Barney were basically part of a uh, secret group for all men, right? Um, the Loyal Order of the Water Buffaloes was the name of their okay. like little organization. Loyal Order of the Water Buffaloes. And this was basically like a Masonic lodge where, that they went to with all men and had rituals and secret words and passwords to get in. Um, yeah, guys, these, this whole cartoon is a super, to me, in my opinion, big shout out to like Freemasonry. Um, just look at this. Okay. They're even doing the uh, Freemason handshake, right? Or some something similar. <laughs> I don't even think they have five fingers, but they're doing something like it. I'll just show you. Now, I could chalk this one up to the fact that these types of clubs are not really much of a thing anymore. But they used to be back in the day. So they have like the loyal odor of the water buffalo or whatever. They're making fun of the Shriners is what they're making fun of. Like, the Shriners, and to some extent, yes, Freemasons, right? Because, you know, the thing is, back in the day, yeah, a lot of men did belong to these types of, like, clubs, and that's all they really are. They're just clubs. Me and myself, I was part of a group called Demolay, which is like a Masonic youth group back when I was a teenager. And, you know, we'd go and uh, we'd wash cars and shit like that and help old people, that kind of thing, and... Then, uh, you know, once I got into high school and I discovered marijuana, I stopped going. <laughs> right? But that's what it is. Like, that that's what these types of groups are. They're like places where guys go and hang out. We would even sometimes do things like there'd be a dinner for the local Masonic group. And it would just be a bunch of, like, old men hanging out and, like, fucking drinking coffee and shit. And talking about stuff and doing business deals and that kind of thing. And... That's it. There's no, like, taking over the earth. There's no secret fucking, like, chambers underneath your local Masonic lodge that go down to, like, 
the center of the earth where the reptilian fucking brainwashing machine is. That's not a thing. That doesn't exist. They would have showed it to us. <laughs> <laughs> right we would have found the secret passage you know because i spent a lot of you know my in my local uh masonic temple you know or whatever masonic lodge right we would have found the secret passage I, you know there's a lots of times where we're just sitting there bored waiting for shit to happen so this stuff doesn't exist and this is like it, it just really shows how the, these conspiracy theories feed off of each other. Okay, I think we got enough of this. There's another 10 minutes left, but you guys get the fucking idea. This woman is a fucking lunatic. And just to kind of finish my thought here, it really does show how these crazy people feed off of this stuff. Like conspiracy theories, it's a mythology that evolves, right? 10 years ago... Nobody was talking about secret groups of pedophiles. There was a little bit of talk about that, but it was mainly when it came to Hollywood. That's what it was. Like 10, 15 years ago, they would talk about it in relation to Hollywood and that kind of thing. And some of that actually turned out to be true. People like Harvey Weinstein and stuff like that. Fucking Jeffrey Epstein, that kind of thing. Some of that actually panned out, right? But the idea of like secret cults of like Masonic fucking trans abusers bullshit <laughs> it's complete and total fucking bullshit there's no secret conspiracy to turn your children gay and trans or whatever through brainwashing them through cartoons it just doesn't exist and the thing is if it did it would be incredibly easy to find evidence of wouldn't it just speaking about this right here you know the flintstones if the Flintstones really was part of some kind of secret fucking program in order to brainwash your children into chopping their nuts off, you would be able to find out about it very easily. You would be able to see very easily if it was true or not. The people who created the Flintstones are still alive. The people who publish the Flintstones are still alive. They still make Flintstones content today. So are the people that work at Hanna-Barbera today, are they involved in the conspiracy theory? You can find out who those people are. You can go interview those people. You can go interview their friends and family. You could go research them and see like, hey, are they part of some kind of secret conspiracy? Blah, 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 whatever. It would be very easy for you to find that out. But they don't do that. They don't do that because that requires work, because that may shatter the illusion of their idiot conspiracy theory. They don't care about the truth. That's what you got to remember about conspiracy theorists, right? They do not care about the truth. They don't give a shit if something is true or not. All they fucking care about is reinforcing their worldview, making themselves feel good. Knowing the super secret info that nobody else knows. You better wake up, sheeple, before it's too late. Before the secret pedophiles come and enforce the gay agenda on your kids or whatever the fuck. And we need to go ban these books or something in order to stop them. That's what it's all about. It's fucking pathetic, folks. Absolutely pathetic. Hello, folks. If you like what I do and you want to support the channel, please consider buying something from my SD shop, supporting me on Patreon liking and subscribing, and checking me out across my social media links listed below. Thank you all so much, and see you next time.